Hey everybody, my name is Eric Kopkis and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Well, Marvel Studios released that bombshell early Monday morning when it comes to their Phase 4 release slate. And obviously we knew about the, the movies that are coming out in 2021 with Black Widow, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Eternals, and Spider-Man No Way Home. And now, and of course, then we knew about 2022 with Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness, uh, Thor Love and Thunder. And then we got the reveal of this. Black Panther... Two is now officially titled Wakanda Forever, and obviously, there's 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 people wondering what was going to happen with Black Panther Two after the untimely passing of King T'Challa himself, uh, Chadwick Boseman. Um, now, obviously, this film has must most definitely had to go under rewrites and uh, definitely changing of the film uh, all the way around uh, to try to figure out where to go after Chadwick Boseman passed. Um, but this title is is perfect in my opinion um because obviously they've now discussed that they're not going to recast t'challa which i kind of wonder if maybe they i mean i understand it's still fresh and it was it's only going to be two years after he died to do that so i understand why they would and a lot of fans don't want them to recast because they want to honor chadwick boseman and you know they have no one else play the character and i totally understand that but obviously i also have the mindset that you know batman's being recast multiple times superman's been recast multiple times wolverine will be recast one day spider-man's been recast and i still say one day iron man and captain america may get recast we'll see what happens there i also feel like those actors could also make returns uh so we'll see what happens because this is in a way the marvel uh, fake death world universe or whatever you might want to call it. I know another YouTuber has coined that phrase, uh, but it is true. I mean, cause we've had multiple people die in the MCU, uh, you know, time and time over again, and they've always come back. And obviously we've had characters retire, but in comics, there's always a way to write them back in, but I digress. Anyway, um, I, I personally thought that maybe eventually you would recast T'Challa. Uh, maybe you don't in this film and maybe you write a way and maybe to explain his absence. And then maybe a few years down the line, he all of a sudden reappears. Uh, I always thought that that might be a good way to address the, the T'Challa character. But if they're going to choose to go this route, kind of like they did with Carrie Fisher in Star Wars, and they don't recast and you know, they did what they could with the footage they had. Uh, but in this case, it sounds like they're going to focus the movie more on the Wakandan culture and center the film around that. Now, what they do with the Black Panther mantle is still to be seen. A lot of people feel like it's going to be his sister Shuri, um, which is it has precedence in the comics, and that is very, very, very likely and possible that that's who's going to take the mantle. Uh, but and maybe this movie will explain this. But I just felt like the last time we saw Shuri, she wasn't ready for that transition yet in the story. It's kind of like uh, Bucky when it comes to taking on the mantle of Captain America. I felt like. At the end of Endgame, it wasn't he wasn't in a right place to take on the shield like Sam Wilson was. Uh, so I feel like you know this film could take the entire film to explain her character progression and where she might actually take the mantle. And if that's the case, I'm cool with it. Uh, but just going into it, you know, somebody like an Umbaku might actually be more equipped to take it on. Um, but uh, I don't think like Killmonger. I know that theory's gone around like, oh, bring Killmonger back and he could take on the mantle. But that dude was a psychopath. I mean. He was raised uh, in a way to where he would he's justifiable and maybe why he feels the way he does. But again, it's a character that, you know, has no, you know, has no compulsion or anything uh, stopping him from, you know, doing the wrong thing. And I think this, whoever takes on the mantle of Black Panther has to have more of a moral center and uh, has to be ready to t uh, take on those responsibilities. So uh, we'll see where they go with the mantle. But in regards to this film here. Um, the idea of centering it on the culture is a great way to honor the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. And I can't wait to see how they do that. It's going to be interesting to see how they market this film, too, uh, because they obviously don't want to give a whole lot away. But they also want to, you know, honor him and show the proper respect, as, as I trust Marvel will do. I mean, of course they will. I mean, we saw how they handled the death of St uh, Sam Lee or Stan Lee. And uh, they, that was handled with all the respect in the world. So this is going to be uh, very emotional when it when it does come out. Uh, I know this character is very important to a lot of people, and uh, and I love the first film. I thought it was a very nice uh, 
different type of film uh, when it comes to the rest of the MCU. It had that that culture was so was so rich in that movie, and I can't wait to see more of that. And I think that it, they they're making the right move to lean into that when it comes to this situation. So I can't wait to see where they go. But that also has a release date of July eighth, two thousand twenty two. We already knew the release date, but the title is what's new here. And uh, I think it, I love the design of it too. It's got this you know metallic like you know uh, vibranium looking uh, you know logo it's very very strong and i can't wait to see where they go with this but on top of this moving on to the next uh, bit of news here that came out of that video uh that video had a lot to unpack and this is another new title for captain marvel 2 is now called the marvels uh, and the reason for this could be twofold um a lot of people when they saw captain marvel 1 the first film uh, granted, that movie made, I believe, a billion dollars, which a lot of Marvel movies do, so it's not that surprising. Um, there's been a few that have not, but a lot of them usually make good money. Um, but uh, a lot of people coming out of that film did not quite you know, latch on to the character of Carol Danvers and Captain Marvel right away. They felt you know, it wasn't exactly what they were looking for, and some of it may be due to the actress making some comments or whatnot. But again, she's new to this spotlight to a degree. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I like the film. I had no problem with Captain Marvel. But the Captain Marvel lore in of itself has other characters. And, we are going, and we've already been introduced to one. Uh, if you've seen WandaVision, uh, again, I'm not going to ruin a whole lot, but you know there's a character that was from the first Captain Marvel film. Little Monica Rambeau, Lieutenant Trouble, is all grown up now. Because the first Captain Marvel movie took place in like 1995. Now it's been a lot of years after Endgame. And now she's a full-blown adult. And we saw her in WandaVision. And she got her powers. And, you know, so we are going to see her in the new Captain Marvel film, The Marvel. So she will be one of at least three different characters that are going to be in this film. We got Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau. And now we're going to, at the end of 2021, get Miss Marvel. Kamala Khan is going to be getting her own show on Disney+. Plus, And she is depicted here in the logo by the S at the end. And Monica Rambeau is the logo in the A. And, of course, the Marvel uh, is in the Captain Marvel font. So all three of those characters are represented in this logo. Uh, so if you want to see more about Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, and Monica Rambeau, go check out WandaVision and Miss Marvel later in 2021, and they will all be tying into the Marvels in November of 2022. And I also kind of wonder if Secret Invasion is going to tie into this a little bit too, because Nick Fury and Talos from the first Captain Marvel movie is going to be getting their own Disney Plus show where the scrolls are invading uh, Earth, infiltrating the planet, and I kind of wonder if maybe this could be the finale of that, I don't know. Or this could be a totally different film uh, altogether. But they hinted in WandaVision that Monica Rambeau and Captain Marvel maybe are not on the best of terms right now. We'll see where they go with that. It, uh, again, none of this is major spoilers if you've not seen WandaVision. Uh, but uh, they are definitely planting the seeds for this film already. Uh, so if you're not watching the Disney Plus shows when it comes to the Marvel Studios MCU brand, you're definitely missing out on some little tidbits. Now, they've already said that if you're not able to see all the Disney Plus shows, they are going to structure these films to where you don't necessarily have to see them. But they are good for character development and the progression of some of these characters as they interweave between TV and the movies. So I highly recommend you check those out. But I like this title. Basically, again, it kind of takes the pressure off of the Carol Danvers maybe not being completely liked by audiences. And now we're going to introduce a couple other characters that they hope to build to kind of maybe lessen the load of the, the, the of the Captain Marvel 2 just being squarely on her shoulders. So in that regard, it's smart business. At the same time, uh, it's introducing new characters into the MCU and bringing them to the forefront from the TV universe to the movies, and uh, it, it'll be great. It should be a maybe a trios team up. There's also talk of maybe America Chavez could be introduced uh, in a Disney Plus show or whatnot or another movie, and then brought into this as well. We'll see where they go, but I like how they've got this. Uh, you know, they, they've interweaved it right now, and it's a smart plan in my opinion. But what do you guys think about these two official new titles for Black Panther 2 and Captain Marvel 2 being Wakanda Forever and the Marvels? Comment down below. Hit the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the notifications about when I put up new content on my channel. And until my next video, guys, take care.